Anyway, it's uh, until 7 o'clock this evening, the Drive Time Show, keeping our eye on all the roads and the trains as well. And talking of transport, uh, we mentioned on Friday's Drive Time that Essex County Council has backed the option for a new £6 billion Thames Crossing proposed by the government, despite claims it will create something called a toxic triangle. Now, uh, on Friday, I spoke to Laura Blake from the uh, Thames uh, Crossing action group and this is what she had to say on the show a toxic triangle that's the word uh, an expression i haven't heard before but i do know that surrock is one of the most polluted areas of the whole of the uk indeed Ros. yes um i mean i think right across the area both sides of the river we have illegally high pollution levels and obviously that is a big issue for the residents everywhere that's going to be affected by it the toxic triangle comes from the fact of the a2 which will be at the bottom of the triangle the m25 coming up the left hand side and then this new lower thames crossing coming up on the right making that triangle and obviously that will create a lot more pollution in the area and stick within that triangle and i'll re- go all around that uh, triangle now this uh, this has been a contentious plan for a long time and there were a number of options for the new Thames crossing I think that we've got to accept that we do need another crossing for the area is it do you, definitely. Do you accept that we do need another we definitely do um, we're all impacted everyone both sides of the river impacted by the issues at the Dartford crossing it's no doubt in anybody's mind that something needs to be done there it needs to be fixed our problem with this is is that the lower Thames crossing as it stands is not going to solve that um, Tim Jones the project director for the Lower Thames Crossing for Highways England, admitted at the March task force meeting at the Thurrock Council that it won't actually solve the problems to the north and south of the river. He's on record saying that. There's audio online on the council website that proves that. And why is that? Why won't it solve the congestion problems in, in his mind? Well, I'm not sure and about... in yours. I'm not sure about his mind. I'm not quite sure what happens there sometimes, to be honest. But in our opinion, um, we have figures that the current crossing is around 100 117 capacity 117% capacity most days now when you think about the fact that by the time this new crossing is built if it's built um, they're expecting at least 20% growth in traffic that's pushing it right up so even with these latest figures that have amazingly jumped from 14% being taken away to 22% It's quite apparent that that is still going to be over capacity at the Dartford crossing. Mm. No one's going to want to really detour miles out of their way to use that new crossing if they want to just go around the M25. Exactly. Now, obviously, a crossing lower down, the way I see it, and perhaps the way you see it and others see it as well, that you look at taking the eastbound traffic away from the M25 completely, like, say, from Folkestone, Dover in Kent, perhaps up to Harwich and... Felix Stowe in Indeed, Suffolk. indeed. There is an argument for that. Um, from our group, we're also very interested um, for people to know if they don't already about option A14, which would be a tunnel running from around junction 2 on the M25 up to around junction 29. Being around seven miles long, it would all be filtered. So, so the, junction 2 is where? The A2. The A2. Okay, yep. let's just get this this straight sure, yeah. and junction 29 that's the a127 indeed it? yes yeah so with a tunnel about seven miles coming through all the air would be filtered so your pollution levels would actually improve through the area it would also take at least 40 percent of the traffic away from the dartford crossing using that a14 option so we feel that that would be a much better option quite if we have to have tunnel, one though isn't it it's quite a long tunnel and i should imagine one of the reasons for not doing that is that it will be perhaps cost prohibitive the estimate that they gave on that was actually 6.6 billion um the current crossing the latest figures that they announced on wednesday is 6.8 billion okay so uh, not a great deal of difference then nope. <laughs> okay so who have you consulted about uh, these details have you gone to your local mp and i know in thurrock you've got jackie Doyle price uh, for this area or basildon and east thurrock you've got stephen metcalf both conservative mps yeah we do we have both um unfortunately jackie doyle price hasn't been as approachable as um stephen metcalf why is that um different theories on it um she seems to be saying that she's opposed to it um but she seems to also say what does she thinks the public want to hear at times of election but then doesn't always necessarily follow through we have tried to have meetings with her but she doesn't seem to be receptive to that idea whereas stephen metcalf has been very open very welcoming to talk to us to try and help us with highways england we have regular meetings with him even to this day we would be more than happy to sit down with jackie doyle price she's recently announced that she feels that there should be 
be calls for judicial review, as have Thurrock Council. Um, we would be more than happy to talk to her. Obviously, the stronger we are, the more of us there are to fight this together. We would welcome any support and help that we can get from anyone, MPs, members of the public. We would sit down quite happily and talk to her. Jackie, if you are listening, please get in touch. We would love to sit down and chat with you and Stephen together. Okay, well, that's that's. Uh, we'll throw the gauntlet down for that one. Um, but obviously, this this you know, you say challenging it and changing it. Isn't it set in stone now, the plans? Not at all, no, Ros. Um, they have announced their preferred route, but they still have to go through statutory consultation, which was announced this week, started on Wednesday. Now, there's um, a number of events, isn't there, coming up? There so, are. Yeah. First one being on Tuesday at Allsit Hall, between 2 and 9pm. All the details for any of the other events can be found on Highways England's site, and also on ours, which is ThamesCrossingActionGroup.com. Um, we would encourage people to come along, ask questions of Highways England, and to take your time when you're filling in the questionnaire for the consultation um, it, there is a lot of documentation make sure you get all your answers to your questions um, and be aware that it will be a tick box exercise they will be trying to get the responses they want don't be caught up in those tick boxes there is also room for free comment use it and express your opinions and your feelings on this it's Gateway 97.8, chatting to Laura Blake from the Thames Crossing Action Group. We'll hear uh, Stephen Metcalf MP's reaction to that in a few moments' time. Uh, travel news is next. Essex County Council has backed the option for a new £6 billion Thames Crossing proposed by the government, despite claims it will create a toxic triangle. And to discuss it right now, I have on the phone uh, Stephen Metcalf, MP, the Conservative for Basildon and East Thurrock, joins me uh, right now. Stephen, this consultation started about a week ago. How long is it expected to go on? Well, the, as you rightly say, the consultation launched about a week ago. It's a 10-week uh, consultation up until uh, the 20th of December. And it gives people t the opportunity to comment on the revised plan that uh, Highways England are uh, proposing. Um, it's good that the consultation has come forward, but there is much in what is being proposed that I do have some issues with. OK, can you elaborate on those, uh, those issues? Well, yes, we, um, in the first instance, I, my concern remains that when the a new Lower Thames Crossing was proposed, call the problems that we all experience at the existing Dartford Crossing, the catastrophic congestion uh, that affects South Essex and North Kent when the existing crossing fails. And with a new crossing as proposed so far away from the existing crossing, I fear that what we will end up with is a new piece of national infrastructure that may well be very beneficial for those coming out of Dover or trying to get into the Midlands, but does very little to help the people of uh, Thurrock particularly, but also South Essex more widely. We know that that congestion at the existing crossing costs millions, causes misery to people caught up in it, and I can't see how as the proposal stand at the moment, that will be addressed. And therefore, I remain sceptical about the whole project. And with this new road being sort of like a few miles east from the existing M25, this, this mention of a toxic triangle, I had members from the Thames Crossing Action Group in on the show last week. They're very, very concerned about the pollution levels that there may well be. It may be on the increase in uh, Thurrock. It's already very high. It is indeed already very high. Uh, parts of our... Uh, Thurrock are in the highest areas of pollution um, and I think it is right and proper that we all demand from Highways England a, a proper plan about how this new crossing is actually going to address the existing air pollution, let alone uh, make it worse. Um, I have grave concerns about some of the connectivity of the new route, the fact that it doesn't connect in all directions, which means that there are limits to the direction in which traffic can go. And so when I talk about the catastrophic congestion of the existing Dartford crossing, which you know, backs up very quickly, it is potentially possible that that will affect the new crossing as well, and what we will end up with, as you rightly say, or as the Thames Crossing Action Group call it, the toxic triangle. So rather than improve air quality, which is what we've been promised, this could potentially uh, make it even worse than it already is. Add to that that I have yet to see a comprehensive plan about how traffic in the event of a European crossing, once the new one is potentially built, uh, and of how 
traffic flows will be managed both north and south of the river, but also on both strate strategic, national and local routes. Someone needs to take control of all of those to ensure that there is a plan about how you keep traffic flowing and that people don't get caught up in 12 hours of traffic jams and caught in car parks and end up having to sleep in places like Ikea, which I think is what happened a matter of only a couple of weeks or so ago. Mm. Now, Essex County Council, they've backed this uh, option. We're calling it option C. Why do you think they're so keen to back it when it's so well, unpopular? As, well, as I've said, um, I can see how... Uh, seen from afar a new piece of national infrastructure that puts another crossing over the Thames could be welcomed for those who see it as a, uh, a part of the, the national infrastructure in its own right. Uh, so I think that that is where Essex County Council is coming from and bear in mind I don't think any of it actually crosses through Essex County Council uh, territory. Uh, I think it goes from, in, from Thurrock into the London Borough of uh, Upminster or Havering. Havering, um, yes. Havering. So, uh, I, while I can see as a county they may uh, welcome the idea of a crossing, as I say, I'm representing my local constituents in Thurrock and I see it doing very little to help them. Right. Now, um, the council, um, the local council here, one of the local councillors is saying uh, the Highways England should be reconsidering a very little known tunnel option known as A14. What do you know about this? Well, I'm aware of the proposal uh, of A14, which is a, a super long tunnel that basically goes from, I think it's pre-junction 1 south of the river and comes out uh, past junction 30 north. Um, on paper, I, I thought it had a lot of merit, have dismissed it. They say it doesn't uh, create the kind of connectivity that they're after. But um, if the proposals that are being promoted at the moment by AG are so significantly different from uh, the original proposals, which I think they are because they include things like a, a service area that we never knew about. Uh, there are you know, rises above railway lines, which I, I have some concern about. And as I said, the connectivity at the main junction. Um, if the council uh, is minded to go for some form of review and to reconsult and reopen the consultation, of course I support that. But I would like to, to look at A14 and understand why it doesn't do what we want it to do, which is to make the traffic movement in Thurrock better when there is a failure of the existing crossing. What message do you have for your, the constituents in your area today? Well, uh, my message to them is that I will remain uh, by their side and stand and uh, put the views that I hear consistently from my constituents to both Highways England and to government at the very highest level. That said, I'm not going to make false promises that I can stop this because this is the third or fourth time that this route has been confirmed and we are now in a consultation process. So what I want to do is make sure that we get the best possible deal from a road that's going to come through and have a huge impact on our local community. That means talking to people, representing people like the, the Thames Crossing Action Group, who I have met with on a number of occasions. Uh, very recently, we had a roundtable meeting with them and Highways England, and I will continue to uh, bring people together to get the best possible deal for Thurrock. But at the moment, there are a lot of concerns, and rightly so, about what is being proposed, and I would encourage people to take part in the consultation get their views into Highways England by the 20th of December and make sure that our voice locally is being heard. Stephen Metcalf, you're the Conservative MP for Basildon and East Thurrock.